Hey guys, I'm back. I'm sorry. It's been a couple of months. If you've been wondering where I've been, what I've been up to, work, school, life, <laughs> everything in general. Uh, so in front of me here is, this has been my fun project here with my, uh, uh, I'm doing an unmanned aerial systems class. Uh, I'm doing, this is my second year of it. And uh, this has been my fun little project over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I've been working on a few things. I'm going to be doing videos again now that school is kind of taking a back burner for a little while. We have a few weeks off. So yeah, let me uh, tell you some of the things I've been up to, what I'm going to be working on. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. Well, first of all, my name is Paul. And this is my YouTube channel where nerdy is cool. And essentially I cover all things that are, well, nerdy and cool. Drones, 3D printing, uh, I've got a full size R2D2. I'm not gonna list it all off. If you found me, you kind of got a clue. So yeah, here I am. It's been a wicked busy couple of months. School, work, all that fun stuff. And I told myself many moons ago that when I make videos, I want them to be fun, educational, entertaining. I'm not chasing metrics. I'm not trying to put something out every week or every two weeks. So that's why. <laughs> if I don't have the time to do something that I really enjoy and want to put out there and take the time to edit, I'm not going to do it. So that said, okay, so first of all, yes, you see this beautiful F-450 drone right here. Kind of cool. Uh, I've been learning this unmanned aerial system stuff. This guy's equipped with a, uh, I got the GPS, the flight computer, the Pixhawk. I got a, a nice uh, electronic compass. Uh, big old giant battery in the bottom, and uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, learning how to do all this stuff. Um, if you're curious, uh, it's the University of Maine of Augusta, the Unmanned Aerial Systems Program, and uh, yeah, this has been really cool. I'm a licensed private pilot. I got my license many years ago, 1992, and uh, like I said, unfortunately, I can't afford to fly as much as I'd like to, but certainly uh, with the advance of drone technology, uh, that became a very interesting topic for me, and I've had a lot of fun learning this. And I can tell you that no matter how many hours you have flying, flying one of these guys is a whole different creature. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have kids that have the little small ones that go tearing across the house. Uh, don't, <laughs> I learned, uh, don't fire this guy up inside the house. Uh, you will find cat hair where you didn't think you had it. Um, <laughs> massive downwash from this. So, uh, and, and they did come out an hour later if you're concerned, but they were pretty scared. But uh, the other fun thing I've been working on is one of the things I've been trying to emphasize on my channel because I've learned this from my full-time job in 3D printing is safety. Um, you may have seen a couple of my videos where I've been putting together these 3D print enclosures. Uh, I've also been doing the uh, fire safety stuff. I've got the blaze cut tubes inside them. And the other thing I've been trying to make people aware of is a couple of things is uh, you want to mitigate the fumes that 3D printers generate. Uh, a lot of people have these things running in their bedroom and stuff like that, and I just grab my hat and go, no, 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 these things, these things melt plastic, they're polymers, they put a lot of stuff into the air, and while the science is kind of early, we don't know really how bad it is for us, but let's face it, we're melting plastic, so it's probably not great for us. So I've been trying to encourage people that, you know, hey, make sure that you're doing something to mitigate that risk. Uh, I've been using the 3D Upfitters carbon air filters. I also have uh, two large air purifiers down here in the basement. So just trying to make sure that you guys, my friends, uh, are doing the best you can to print safe. Uh, the other thing I've been trying to emphasize to people is drying your filament. I've invested in a print dryer pro. Uh, I have a couple of dry boxes that I'm using on top of my enclosure. So the theory being that, you know, even when you get a vacuum pack, you want to make sure that you put it through the dryer look at the technical data sheet that comes with the filament. They'll tell you that the drying temperature, drying time is recommended. And I've been finding that since I've been adhering to this policy, uh, I've been getting way better prints. So not only are you saving energy, you're not reprinting and wasting filament, uh, but you get it right the first time. So if you are not one that believes much in drying your filament, even PLAs or PETGs, please, I'll be happy to make some videos to explain it to you better, but do your research. Um, with a lot of these things, especially if you're printing big stuff, you just want to print it once and, print, and you want to print it right. So in the background here, and I have one still in the box back here, uh, I've been working on every payday, you know, I go over payday or two here, plus my YouTube income, uh, picking up another enclosure, getting another carbon filter. 
uh, and working on getting all these machines uh, inside these enclosures. The other thing I'm doing with all these machines, as you can see from this one sitting here, is we're going through and upgrading them. Uh, a lot of these machines that I have acquired over the last year or two, 21 to date, uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that uh, you don't need to upgrade a 3D printer, don't feel that kind of pressure, but what I'm noticing on the machines that I have is there are certainly some areas that need improving, and if I want these guys to print large prints, I want known good stuff inside them. So a lot of the stock Creality hot ends, the Arion hot ends, stuff like that. Um, I have several DDX uh, hot ends going inside these. I, I don't want to bore you with all those details, but essentially uh, some of the big things that I'm doing is replacing power supplies, uh, replacing the hot ends, uh, doing direct drive, and I'm trying to think what else. Oh, and the, uh, of course the bed surface. So, and as you, uh, I'll zoom around the shop here. The other thing that uh, I've added to the pile of stuff here because in this part of the country, we do get those dreaded power flickers, is I've invested in a couple of UPSs. Now, the UPSs that I've purchased, uh, these are the cyber data, or the cyber power, rather, uh, or the APC, whatever your preference is. Um, I've been buying the bigger ones for the bigger printers, and the intent is not for these things to power the printer for you know, 10, 20, or 30 minutes to run off battery. Uh, it's solely because the printers uh, that need them, have AC beds, have bigger power draws. And the big thing I'm trying to do is make sure that if I'm doing a multi-day print, a flicker can ruin everything. So I just want to make sure that there's a big enough power backup there uh, to hold it over for a couple minutes until power is restored or stable. So trying to print a little smarter <laughs> as I've been doing this for a few years. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what next? Am I going to see any cool drone stuff? Yeah, I'll show you a little drone video. Because let me tell you my end goal here. The end goal here is so that we have several reliable, well-dialed in machines so I can start cranking out these large print projects I've been wanting to do for a long time. Iron Man, BB-8, C-3PO, all kinds of fun stuff. I have the farm here, I have the equipment, and I got plenty of, plenty of material. I just want to make sure that the machines, if I'm going to let them run for multiple days to make these parts, are solid. So that's that's what I'm working on. The, uh, the fun part is, getting an enclosure that will fit the bigger printers. And last on this list, because it's more of a curiosity to me than anything else, uh, I have an Anycubic Chiron, and it is, I wanna be nice, but honest to God, stock out of the box is junk. It really is. Uh, so that also needs to have a motherboard swap, probably a power supply swap, a bunch of other things. It is a 450 by 450 by 450, I believe, I'd have to double check. And it has potential. Anything that prints that big has potential. But like a lot of these printers that come from overseas, a lot of shortcuts were taken. So let's just gut it and redo it and make it better than before. That's the theory. So, and then somewhere in there, I have a whole bunch of other smaller printers that could use a few tweaks as well. So I told myself this was going to be a short video, kind of a conversation with my friends here, but I kind of stretched it out. So I just wanted to say I'm back. I'm looking forward to making videos. I'm sorry, school, work, life got really busy, but I missed doing this. And I finally have some free time and I'm gonna get back into it. As always, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking, any suggestions you have, any tips. And that's it for this time. Remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Catch you later.